didn't, didn't even go to church, but I woke up feeling all blessed. If I got something to say to her, I'll say it with my dress. Spend my own money whenever I get a check. I ain't saving hoes or it's up on my chest. Every time I pull up on a scene, I let it flex. You know what? Today is actually raining, which is very unusual. Don't look like that from where I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like the clouds are not thick enough, I think, but yeah, mm -hmm. today we've got a rainy day. But it's the first rainy day in that. Like, in a month. Yeah, we, we don't know about that in the UK. No, we don't do it. <laughs> no, no, we don't. But welcome to Thank October Red that. Interviews. Um, I've much. had my eye on you for a while. Been yeah. following you for quite some time. I see um, you. So, yeah, it's a pleasure to get you on the show. Thank you very much. So, let me just put this inside it. Being unprofessional. It's all here. right. Sorry, <laughs> guys. This life goes on. If you got to take a call, you got to do what you need to do. Just do it. We can pause. This isn't live. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah, let's go. So, yeah. So I want to get straight into it. I don't really want to beat about the bush with you because um, you're that kind of person anyway. You sort of like you come across as you tell it how it is. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, you going over to America, you traveling. I know mm -hmm. before you've had your last bout, which we'll come on to, you've always been someone that travels. And every mm -hmm. time you travel, you go into a boxing gym. Yeah. You never travel yeah. without them boots or without the gloves. Talk to no. me about that mindset, man. It's just fitness is a lifestyle. I'm a professional athlete. Boxing is a lifestyle. Um, and boxing is how I stay fit outside of doing it professionally it's how I stay fit it's, mm. I was a key fitter for four years before I started boxing as an amateur okay so again it's how I know to stay fit so when I travel um I take my stuff you know my training things with me to train oh, but also I always pack a gum shield you know with me when I travel because mm. you just never know when you get a chance to spar mm -hmm. and it's how it's come in handy quite a few times you know mm. um so yeah it's just you, there's always an opportunity to learn something else from another coach in another place. There's always an opportunity to get a different perspective on things. And there's always an opportunity to get to spar with somebody else and gain some very good experience. So I think it's a no-brainer, personally. You think it's a no-brainer because it's something that comes naturally to your thought process. Um, yeah. There's a lot of boxers out there and, you know, they're not, traveling like yourself and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, I admire you because you're not afraid to go into territories that are unknown mm -hmm. um I'm going to push forward to the, your recent win and we're going to work mm -hmm. backwards everyone okay, knows who you are you don't really need much of an introduction so uh, talk you. to me about this fight that you've just had with a Mexican and the Mexican seems to be the British kryptonite at the moment yeah. So talk me through that. How did that happen? Well, as you know, I'm in LA uh, and I have been for some time. I'm probably going to be here for much longer as well. Okay. And um, No, Mexicans were just going to the UK and beating up UK boxers. And I was just like, yeah, you know, Mexico's next door. I go down and show them what time it is when I'm playing. Um, <laughs> what, it, what it is really is... Yeah. Um, there, there is an element of that, there is an element of truth to that, but also it's that the since my last since the fight I had in September in Russia, yes, uh, the British boxing board has suspended me. And although I'm, I'm medically clear, yes, and physically fit, they're still yet to reinstate my license or lift the suspension that they put on me. It's very strange, I don't understand what's going on exactly. Um, but it's allowed me to, I'm just, I look at it positive as a very thing. And what that what that's done is it's allowed me to be able to travel without having to apologize to anybody, mm -hmm. meaning cultures or whatever, because yeah. I'm like, well, I box full time and I don't have a license here. So what need do I need to be here? So it's allowed me the joy and comfort of being able to explore. So I was in Mexico, first of all, yeah. and I was training out there. Then I came to the US and I'm training here with a guy that I've known for a couple of years, about three years now, actually. Um, and he's a 
brilliant coach. I'm learning so much. I'm in a gym with champions and hungry prospects, and it's so good. It's so great. And, um, you know, the last fight I had before this one was in September 2020, and it was just, like, dragging on. It's, like, five, six months later, and I still haven't been in the ring. When I had seven fights between March 19 and February 2020, I had seven mm. fights. That seven fights in less than a year. Um, so to go from that and then not fighting for six months is a lot. And this is genuinely what I do. Yeah. You never catch me out of shape. You never mm-hmm. catch me. I mean, maybe not in peak shape, but you never find me out of shape. Mm-hmm. And I was speaking, I met with a heavyweight called Christopher Lovejoy. You know, a lot of UK fans would know him because he was meant to be fighting Dave Allen for Don King called him out of show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I met up with him because he's in LA, he's an LA guy. And he told me that he was going to be fighting in Mexico in two weeks. And I was like, oh, can I get on that? And I just said it just that like, casually. And he was like, yeah, well, no doubt. I'll reach out to the guy. And he, he rang the guy whilst I was there, had him on last week. And the guy was like, this is what you got to do. You know, um, this is what you got to do to get yourself over. And this is how we get you the license. And um you know covid tests and all that stuff yeah. I'm like, Yo, this stuff's kind of straightforward and it's a bit like fighting on a small wall show where you know the fighter really is coughing up the money because uh, there's no audience and all that so okay. no ticket sales which is nice but anyway on two weeks notice i was just like yeah i'll do it i'll do it put me on the show mm-hmm. and then you know made weight the guy was a bit heavier so i had to go back up i asked for an appointment with a 50 50 record and i got that um, because I'd, I'd been fought box for so long, you know, so I was like, give me someone with a 50 50 record. <laughs> um, I definitely didn't want someone with a losing record. And yeah, I got in there and I got him out in, you know, I, I don't know if it was a minute or two, but it was definitely yeah. less than two minutes. Yeah. And I wasn't even trying to get him up because I've been up for so long. I literally went in the ring with the intention of executing things that I've been doing in training. Yes. Because I'm developing so much out here. And um, I guess when you do what you're being taught in training, those are the kind of results you get. Yeah. So it's made me hungrier. The fight was on Saturday. I had a horrible time getting back into the United States after. Um, it took me 24 hours plus to get back into the United States. And um, so now that that's happened, I don't think I'll be going back to Mexico to fight anytime soon mm-hmm. until this COVID stuff is over. You know, yeah. The restrictions are making it hard. Um, that being said, though, I was meant to have another fight in another two weeks, so a week and a half from now, in Mexico again, against a guy who had about 43 fights and he won about 28 of them. I think okay. he had 28 wins, some of that 17 losses yeah. and a few draws. Yeah. So it was a decent record. And that so this one that I had just a few days ago was meant to be, okay, this is, you know, shake off like, the, the actual like main cobwebs. And then go on to this next one where it's like kind of a tune-up. Yeah. But um, now I'm not trying to go back to Mexico for now. So I'm here and I'm hungry. I had a fight on Saturday, travelled for 24 hours, got back Sunday night. And then Monday morning, I was in the boxing gym again. Tuesday morning, I was sparring. Um, today's Wednesday. It's Wednesday morning now. And um, after this call, I'm going to be going to the gym again. I'm hungry. And mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for the British Boxing Board to reinstate my licence. Until they do that, I'm going to continue to get action where I can so my next fight is likely to be in the United States which is not a bad thing the move then I know you said you got um you were sitting waiting around um you've traveled before you've Mm -hmm. obviously made some connections Mm -hmm. you mentioned that you know you've sparred in some gyms you've you've met some you know coaches that you're Mm -hmm. working with working with well you're learning from them you you know the Mm -hmm. technique that they're applying so your learning mm-hmm. is working in the ring as it did on Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to me about the difference in training. Like you said, hungry prospects out there in the gym. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about the difference of sparring over where you are mm-hmm. um, to sparring and training in the UK. I think every gym, like anything, when you go to a different version, you're going to get a different yeah. energy and a different atmosphere and whatnot. Yeah. And it, um, so it'll be difficult to generalize the entire UK. 
Uh, what I would say, though, about the gym that I'm training at, like I said, you know, we've got champions. Um, to You've got Gilberto Zerda Ramirez training there. You've got Regis Progre training there. You've got Lucky Boy Amatoshan training there. Um, you've had many champions that have come in over the, t over the years and people who still pop in. Cecilia Breakers was training there. Um, even Canelo's trained there at some point, you know. So, like, there are, there are a lot of good people at this gym. And... Um, with regards to the prospects as well, it's with those people, I say the names because they speak for themselves, but it's how nuanced they are in their approach to boxing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got, for example, there's this prospect that I really like. His name is Scrappy. Um, calls himself Scrappy Boxing on Instagram, so anyone can find him. Um, he's a real personality, real character, and he's an absolute student of the game. Like, he loves the game. So it's been... I love seeing that because I'm like that. And for example, I would be watching a coach doing something with a fire because I'm absorbing. And I turn around and Scrappy's doing the same thing. Mm. And then it's stuff like recording sparring and then reviewing yes. it immediately after yes. with the coach. This yes. is what happened. This is what could have happened. Yes. Um, in this moment, you got hit because you tried to respond straight away. If you're that far ahead in the round, yeah, he might hit you there, but you're still ahead. So only retaliate if it suits you. Don't go into a war when you're already ahead. Of, you know, just that nuances like that. And there's so much more. I don't want to give too much away, but yeah. that gives you an idea of the, you know, the kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's a cerebral gym is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And me being a cerebral person, it's a perfect fit mm. um, because it's not about you know, how hard do you want to train and all that stuff. I mean, if you're doing this full time, you want it. It's, it's clear that you want it if you're doing it full time. But I find with a lot of gyms in the UK, you have a lot of coaches that are almost trying to challenge the fighters to prove how much they want it all the time. And for me, it's that, well, if the fighter is doing this full time, they probably want it. But similarly, you give them the work and if they're hungry, they'll do it. You wouldn't have to chase someone who wants to do it, mm -hmm. to do the work. They'll be asking you for more. Mm -hmm. So then what you should be focusing on is the application of what you're teaching them. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, that's what happens in this gym. And I'm really grateful to be here. You know, how long have you been out there? Sorry, I didn't ask you that. Uh, it's a bit of a hard one to say because I came out early November last year. Yeah. Then I came back to UK for Christmas. Right, and then you went. And then I came back out at the start of this year. Yeah. So it depends on how you want to see it. Um, 11th of January, I left the UK. Yeah. I'm okay, and I've been from that. Places. Yeah, but um, I was also here from beginning of November last year to mid-December. So it depends how you want to see it. Why America? Um, first reason is, uh, there are so many reasons, actually. But the main reason for me is that my fiancé lives here. Oh, engaged. congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't jumped on social media, actually. I probably shouldn't have said that. I should have just said, do you know what? Anyway, it is, I said what I said. Um, yeah, See, I was thought he was going to say it's for the love of boxing, not for love, but... Well, that, well, so as much as I'm committed to boxing, boxing's for a certain period of my life, and then my life goes on. Mm -hmm. So right now, boxing takes priority in terms of... Um, it's hard to say, but boxing takes priority in some ways. But ultimately speaking, in the long term, family comes first, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons. One of us had to move. and Okay. I couldn't justify trying to get her to move from LA to London. Um, but then the boxing, 100%, is like a big part. Um, like I said, with the stuff that I'm learning, I've always been aware of this stuff. I've always wanted to make trips here just for training. Mm -hmm. But then now I've got the opportunity to just come and just be based here. So... I'm taking mm. it. And then the weather's great. The people are great. I like how open Americans are. Um, and also people talk to people here. Like you'd go in a lift and someone will come in and be like, yo, what's up, man? And then you'll be like, you know, you say hello and then they'll be leaving and be like, yo, have a nice day. In the UK, you do that and we all know, you know, you're a weirdo or you want something or some crap. I'm very like chilled. I'm about to sign. I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know kind of like bohemian you know like easy going free spirit mm -hmm. so the uptightness of the uk has always been something i've been uncomfortable with but out here 
there are uptight people here too, but there are more people that are willing to just, you know, express themselves and enjoy that. I'll uh, give you an example. If you go in a boxing gym here, a random person will walk up to you and they'll be like, hey, my name's Brandon, what's your name? Okay. And, you know, and then they'll introduce themselves or whatever. Sometimes they might ask you if you're a fighter, if you've had any fights or whatever, and then they'll keep it stepping. And then now you're cool. In UK gyms, I've never seen that. Now Everyone you obviously in. haven't been to Birmingham because we're really Is friendly it? in Birmingham. Uh, well, in London and stuff, it, it doesn't happen. You walk in a gym, people will say cool just because you've like, caught, you know, yeah. you've know, made eye yeah. contact. Yeah. Um, and then no one really talks to anyone. Um, they'll talk to you if there's a reason. So they are all right people, but don't go out their way to welcome people, you know. But it's just little things like that, and they compound, you know. And then you, you just feel like it's, I feel like I'm on a holiday, but just just a very extended holiday. Mm. But at the same time, I'm training on a daily basis and getting so much better. Yeah, that life is great, man. Mm. Yeah, well, congratulations on uh, getting engaged. That's really nice news to hear. Um, that being obviously your number one priority and obviously yeah. getting that more varied experience um, with mm -hmm. the boxing. Um, yeah. I'm not one for putting words in anybody's mouth, but it seems as if maybe you felt like you was getting a bit stagnant here in the UK. I wouldn't say I was getting, I wouldn't say I was getting stagnant. I was still getting better, but it's accelerated over here it's ex accelerated multiple times over yeah. and it, it's about alignment as well it's things like um you the coach and the fire have to be aligned so yeah for example may um may have a senior taught floyd how to box in the way he did mm -hmm. actually Floyd had two coaches so maybe let me not use that let's say Virgil Hunter taught Andre Ward the way he boxes, mm -hmm. right? And it works great for Andre Ward. Mm -hmm. It would work great for people with similar mindsets. Or those methods that were used would work yeah. great for people with similar mindsets, Andre Ward, similar physical attributes, okay. similar temperament. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that if you have it doesn't mean that it would he can coach anybody and make them great, basically. Mm -hmm. you, you would have to gel with his style. Yeah. You know, so because of the way I look at boxing and my views on boxing, I, I'm a type of boxer that loves to watch film studies and I see a knockout and I want to rewind for like at least a minute, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. minute and a half ideally, you know, because I want to see what built up to right. the knockout. Okay. Most people look like the previous five seconds, but I want to see what was the yeah. flow of the fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, how long were they setting that shot up for? Yeah. Um, and so many other factors, you know. Yeah. And in the UK, we don't have too many people that do that. And, you know, my UK coach, um, Ergen Omar, he's brilliant because he's very, he's a very open minded guy. He's committed to growing himself. Um, but also at the same time, he works a full time job and coaches me on the side. Yeah. So, uh, plus, he's got a family. So, there's only so much he can do. Mm. Um, it was still in good, like, I was still in good terms. I was still talking, he's still, he's still a culture man. Um, you know, updating him all the time with my sparring, I send him videos with the fight, just the opponent, okay. yes or no, you know, that sort of stuff. So he's still very well involved, mm. but he's also comfortable enough in our relationship to allow me to come out here and explore what I'm exploring. Yeah. And it's such a unique thing because I know most coaches wouldn't do that. Mm. You know, but then I guess that's because most fighters probably wouldn't have the loyalty. So um, it's not to say that it's all about loyalty because it is a business. It is your life that you're making decisions about and everyone around it has to understand. Mm. Um, but I'm rambling on a bit now. The point no, I'm trying you, to make but, is... But you're, but you're not though, because this is, this is your experience and your experience, just like everybody else's, is different. You know, mm. that's why I like speaking to people that are, because they've every boxer's story is different you know their experiences yeah. determine how they deal with things their future mm -hmm. going into the ring if you've had certain experiences that those experiences will reflect when you get in the ring it's always I'm different sure. you might do yeah. this, a yeah. similar move to somebody else or whatever but it's still you it's still unique mm -hmm. um yeah. so no it, it's not rambling because this is something that 
I've spoken about a few times and I think there was one point where you were on it uh, you were a guest on um, a fellow boxing channel Pep Talk mm-hmm. UK and mm-hmm. I was saying one of the things I was saying about British fighters that want mm-hmm. to become world champions must mm-hmm. spar people from different parts of the world oh yeah because for sure. that's exactly what you're going to be doing to become a champion you'll be fighting yeah, cha- well, people yeah. from other countries by definition world champion you've there got to be capable go. of fighting people from different for sure you're right and i've had a conversation about something similar with several people and one of the things that's become very apparent is that if you name the greatest fighters in boxing history most of them are from this side of the world mm-hmm. you know the usa and mexico mm-hmm. and then we have a few Brits that have been great and you take away prince nazim from that group of people mm-hmm. and everyone else has traveled to get better um actually apart from calzaghi as well I don't think Kazaki traveled much. Um, but if you think, you know, your Chris Eubanks are, is a big name, maybe, maybe not the greatest of all time, but, you know, it was a big name. Even that like David Hay traveled a lot to, to get about. Like so many of like, the fighters that we admire um, in British boxing history traveled to get different work or brought in yeah. foreign cultures because you need to have a, perspe- a more rounded perspective. Yes. To, get the picture properly yeah you know if i if i have you looking at me like this you know what the front of my face looks like but you don't know what my head looks like Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so you need different perspectives Mm -hmm. so you've got to travel there or maybe bring someone who's seen what's there to come over here and describe to you what that looks like yeah you know etc and then you get a full picture of Mm -hmm. it Um, so it's definitely important and not just for the uk but for anybody Anybody. living anywhere You've yeah. Got to, yeah, you've got to diversify and get around. What's beautiful about America as well, though, is it's so big. I mean, the state of California alone is probably the size of the UK, I think, or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's so big that there's so much diversity within the United States alone that a lot of people are, being, are able to learn so much just by traveling within the US. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you go to, you know, people talk about, all right, if you've got a New York fire, and then you've got a Philadelphia fighter, the mm-hmm. chances are the styles are distinctively different or the typical styles, you know? You and then you go down- It's like tribal. I wouldn't say it's tribal, it's just, we're products of our environments, aren't we, as human beings? We're that adaptable that we become products of our environment. So wherever you are, you would adapt to. And the more you expose yourself to, the more you get to adapt to, yeah. the more rounded you become. Yeah. As a as a as an individual, really, but in this context as a boxer. Mm. <coughs> Sorry. That's you. Yeah, thank you. It's not the corona, is it? <laughs> uh no, that's the cough. I want your job. I know, I know. I get people all the time when they're the sneeze or the cough. I'm like, is it a rona? Is it a rona? <laughs> What's it like out there in relation to uh, the corona, to how it is in, in the UK? Because everyone seems to be just getting on with everything out there, unless it's, I don't know, maybe I'm just looking and seeing what I want to see, which is freedom. Yeah, I think we all want to see freedom. It's crazy, isn't it, that we've allowed our liberties to be taken, for so, especially for such a long time. Yeah. But I, I'm going to avoid the politics. Um, we can discuss that UK, off camera yeah. another day. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? But the UK is in full lockdown now, right? Yeah. With America, what it is, is again, it's so big that they've just got it different in different states. So right. I think a large part of America is still closed, um, but a large part of, but I don't know, actually, I don't know exactly what's going on in every state. What I do know is I'm in California. Yeah. And in California, you're allowed outdoor gyms, outdoor dining. Right. And Yeah. And a few other things are going on. And although the weather's not the greatest today, literally yesterday was 24 degrees. Um, today's probably like 19 or 20, but there's a bit of rain. And then like it's just sunny for like the next, however long I can see the weather's forecast for. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah so anyway the reason i bring it up is because it makes it okay then that you can dine and work out outside and yeah. you know a lot of stores are open it's not just none it's not only essential stores stores just open in general um but then you got somewhere like texas florida um or nevada um and they can they they've got everything open they've got absolutely everything open but the only thing is that they have measures so you know they've got temperature checks when you're walking into venues or into stores um mask when you're in certain places but things are open events are allowed to go on at about 50 percent capacity some places okay. at 25 percent mm. yeah which is why canelo fought in yeah. miami because there was a crowd and yeah. if you notice a lot of the u.s fights have ever been in texas or florida okay you know i never can... clocked that because i didn't realize yeah. that it's different in certain yeah. I thought it was literally open everywhere but no nah, it's different my ignorance yeah no nah, it's calm it's understandable um it's an easy thing to miss yeah. but yeah so a lot if you any u.s fight any big u.s fight recently has been in texas or florida um and it's because you know they can get the gate money mm. even if it's 50 percent it's they might have had 100 percent capacity and not sold out so you know yeah um and now people are dying to get out for stuff so if you do anything even 50 percent capacity people are turning up mm. um new york is the same as um, california okay oh so, yeah so you know they've got partial openings and stuff yeah so anyway so that, that's basically what it's like here so it's a lot more relaxed than it is yeah. in the UK. If, you're in a, if you're in a place that's cold you know, like I said, Philadelphia or whatever, Texas had a cold storm yeah, recently. Yeah, they had some insane yeah. weather. Yeah, it was proper strange. Um, they didn't even have the infrastructure for it because it was just that strange. Yeah. Um, yeah, but outside of the cold place, if you're in something like California, you know, Texas, outside of the storm, Arizona, you know, like in the West Coast, really, mm -hmm. uh, or down south, then like, the weather's lit and you can do yeah. a lot of things, though, yeah. so it's all right. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, in the UK, like, I've had a lot of people just sending me pictures and videos or just complaining. Just, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. though, a lot of people are not listening. People are still up. I, I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't know, but yeah, I can imagine um, everything's still locked down here. I think we're opening up. Well, I know that the gyms are opening on the 12th of April, and that's all I really yeah. care about, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people really open. Keep going for that. Um, yeah, but there, I think there may be another date prior, but I don't know what that. I think it might be the children are going back to school. I don't know, but I, I just hear. I saw the, I saw the roadmap with the traffic light system. Oh, yeah, have you seen that? Oh, no, there's a roadmap. I, I tend to just yeah, yeah. It's a I, it got sent to me, um, right. and it's, it's it, yes, it, it says that like it said kids go back to school, gyms open venues that's x amount of capacity mm -hmm. and then eventually till um, june the 21st where everyone's allowed out so i guess a lot of people are going to be working out now because they're going to be trying to get this panicking. Bodies for june the 21st. yeah everyone's yeah panicking but uh, that's if we get there because there's apparently a new brazil uh, variant uh, and they've extended furlough until september well, until september this year yeah Wow. So wait, no. you'll still be getting furloughed even though you didn't pay tax last year. It's there, it's it's in the sorry, budget. I, sorry, I studied accounting and entrepreneurship at uni and uh, okay. thinking of the economy, I'm thinking Yeah, so, so something's gonna give. Something's gonna give, but we'll see. But yeah, we we will. Like I said, that's definitely another topic. Um yeah. glad you're out there and you're and you're active. But I'm going to pull you back to 2020 mm -hmm. when you fought, um, is it Fedor Chudinov? I just need mm -hmm. to pronounce his name. Fedor Chudinov, yeah. Um, talk to me about that fight, you know, because that was sort of like under the radar as well. It wasn't actually under the radar. I just took the fight on short notice. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. I generally took the fight and show sure, no, Right, okay. So what happened was I boxed against um oh my god, wait. Cody Davis. Yeah. Uh, February twenty second, yeah. twenty twenty. Yeah. Um I remember it because that all the twos and twos one of my favorite numbers. 
Um, so I boxed him then and I beat him. I was supposed to lose. I know I was brought in as an opponent, as a good name for him to get on his record. I knew that and I told him that at the press conference. Interesting. Um, yeah, and I, I, said, I said, you guys have made a mistake, but it is what it is. Um, even like, they were asking him about what he would do if he wins the fight. It's a British Tower eliminator. Would he fight Lerone? No, you didn't ask me that question <laughs> because they asked me questions first. So I told him, I was like, clearly you, you guys are making it clear who you think is going to win. But anyway, I went out and I beat him. And then after that, then that put me the person into being the person to fight Leroy. So I went away, I came back. Um, I went away after that fight. You know, I was with you traveling. I went to Dubai. Mm -hmm. I came back beginning of March. And then I was asked if I would fight um, Leroy Richards. And I was like, yeah, of course I will. That then was something started, that was bubbling for a while anyway, yourself and Laurent, wasn't it? Nah, it wasn't, you know. Laurent and I are cool. Like, we've known each other from Repton days. We're on the same amateur club. Yeah. Like, we're cool. When we see each other, we're cool. Yeah. Um, it was just that when the fight was offered... Yes. I mean, we're both boxing, so you've got something I want. I'm going to take it. So I said, yeah. And then they said the fight will be April 17th. So that gave me five weeks to get ready. Yeah. Um, and I was ill at the time as well. I think I actually had COVID thinking back at it. Yeah. Um, the symptoms I had, but I didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah. Um, but I remember being ill and still taking the fight anyway. I was like, I'll recover in like a week, maybe two. And then I was, I was just got this warrior mentality that's unusual. Um, and I was like, I'll be fine, I'll do it. And I remember training through my sickness. And, um, and a few, I don't know, it's like a week or two. They announced that we're going into lockdown and then the fight was um, cancelled yeah. or rescheduled. But yeah. when I found out the fight was rescheduled, the same moment I found out the fight was rescheduled, I collapsed. Not collapsed as in passed out, but like the sickness just overcame my body. It was like the worst right, sickness. Okay. Like, my body was aching and everything. Um, the following day, I slept for 24 hours straight. Mm -hmm. uh, it was incredible. Um, and then I recovered from that. Just so now we're waiting, you know, when's the date going to be? When are we going to be able to do this? Okay, maybe we're going to have it behind closed doors. Then eventually, um, we came to June, and we were talking about having, no, no, it was May, we were talking about having a fight in June. Yeah. Um, and then it was all agreed, and then yeah. he pulled out. I don't remember what the reason was that he pulled out. He said he needed... he just had a baby. No, 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 yeah, I'm going to get to that. So initially, it was like late June or beginning of July. He said he, mm. he couldn't do that date. He said he can only do a later date. So okay. we tried to get it in in July. Yeah. Um... And he had another excuse for why he couldn't do that. And I can't remember, I can't remember where it was because it's cute. Um, but from all accounts that I know of, doing my own research, the guy was just not ready. He didn't look after himself through lockdown. So he was overweight, not as fit as he okay. should be. Okay. Um, but he also just joined Dave Colwell at the time. And I genuinely think that Dave yeah. Colwell's looked at him going, Why have you guys accepted a voluntary fight against Umar Sadiq? Because right. it was a very power eliminator, but it wasn't a final eliminator. Yeah. Um, so he's probably wanted more time with him. Okay. To get him prepared. That's what I think was happening. Okay. I don't think he would have been able to save him personally. Yeah. Um, so he's pushed that back again. And then an August date was presented. And then yeah. he said he's having a baby. So it was just like, well, didn't you know that you were having a baby when you pushed the date back initially? Mm. You know? Um, but also, if you're having a baby, all right, your wife gives birth, not you. So you can still have to fight, you know? <laughs> Um, and then his training with Dave Colwell, who's based up in Sheffield or wherever, mm -hmm. is he lives in London, so it's not like you were going to be with the baby anyway because he was saying he wanted to have the fight later on in August. Right. So I was like, Well, you'll be in camp, so you're still not going to be there anyway. What's the difference, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so nothing made sense anyway. So he's playing around at this point. I'm convinced that he's ducking. Um, I'm calling him out, whatever. Nothing personal, it's just business. Yeah, I remember, and, um, I remember it well. Yeah. So then I, when all of that was going on, what happened was, because I stay so fit anyway, and I've had all these prospective dates I was training for, um, I started to burn out. And not just that, I was actually going down. Okay. So I was just like, well, I need to go away. So I stopped training for a week. For, yep. Actually, first I stopped training for a week. Um, took a week off. Came back after the week off, and then still didn't quite feel right. Mm. so I was like I need some sun I know my body and I know that I need sun mm -hmm. so I went away on holiday didn't tell anyone I'm finally telling I went away on holiday to Spain and whilst I was on holiday in Spain I got a phone call asking if, if I'll fight Fedor Chudinov in three weeks time mm. so I said what is it for and I said the WBA gold title and I said well this is my price because it's short notice it's not ideal 
Um, and they won't offer, they'll say, we can't give you the money. I said, well, then I'm not fighting. I'll wait for Lerone. I'm already contracted to fight him. We've signed yeah. the contract. So yeah. I'll wait for Lerone. Um, yeah. Basically, long story short is the negotiations were non-finalised from when I was on holiday up until a week before the fight. And then a week before the fight, they finally they finalized the um, you know the contract came through okay all the terms are agreed okay mutual officials yeah um travel dates whatever it's yeah. about a week and a half actually yeah so then i was like well when do we, when do we travel and they're like well you've got to get your visa so we're going to do the visa and they've gone well um the earliest so the russian promoters made it so that even though we can apply for the visa the thursday before going the earliest we can collect the visa is the tuesday of the week of the fight and the fight was on a friday Ooh. so i was like uh, well, you fit, I'm not gonna go on the same that we could have fight um, mm. to Russia and then, but, yeah. um, and then what I said to them was, look, at this point, either have the visas by Friday and travel on the weekend, or if not, the latest day I'll travel is Monday, but it'll be business class flights for myself and my whole team because mm -hmm. we need to stretch our legs and sleep. Yeah, you got you got to hit them mid with the money because that's when people perk up. Um, so then magically, now we're able to get the visas by Friday. Mm. Um, and then we went off on Sunday. Was it Sunday or Monday? I don't remember now. Sunday or Monday, but the fight was on Friday. Yeah. And anyway, we went, and then um, they played games all through the fight week, asking us to come out to events when at 11 a.m. when the events were starting at 2 o'clock, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, and then the, we had the weigh-in, and after the weigh-in, they said, oh, we couldn't get visas for any of the mutual officials. So all the officials going to be um, Russian um you know last minute thing all of that that's yeah they were just playing games left right and center so i went in the ring knowing yeah. that i was fighting against him the judges and the ref and then i really got put off because in the first minute of the fight it's the fights the full fights in daily motion so what the russians have done most of the propaganda is they've only uploaded a fight from round six onwards on youtube so they've got a ring walk and all this stuff yeah. and then it goes to round six. And the reason why they've done that is because up to round six, it wasn't a close fight. I was clearly ahead. Wait there. Right? I'm going to get that up on YouTube. Oh, God. The reason I mentioned that yeah. is because in the first, very first minute of the fight, the ref yeah. warns me four times. It doesn't no, stop. There wasn't any warnings me, in that. There wasn't any warnings. Yeah. It was just no. like, don't hit him in the back of the head. At one point, Fed Chuna threw a jab, a missed, and I parried his jab, and he's gone to me, don't hold his hand. Um, then he's gone, don't hold him, don't hit the back of the head, don't hit low. I forgot, it was just that, there were literally four warnings in what felt to me at the moment, like no time. I was thinking, fuck me, we've got, sorry, we've nice. got 12 rounds of this. Mm. Um, we've got 12 rounds of this. When do they start deducting points? When I'm already in Russia with Russian judges, like I can't afford to let anything go. And then that like, the pressure added. Then I was like, I've got to win every second of every round. Then I'm overworking and times when I should have been chilling and going for a walk, I was still like going at it. And I'll hit him four times, he'll hit me once. And I think I've got to hit him eight more times to win the round. Wow. Um, yeah, so I was just like, I was burning way too much energy. And by the time I got to the 12th round, I was like, really exhausted. I was just, probably from like the ninth round onwards, I was just fighting on sheer determination. Okay. Um, and then in the 12th round, you know, he had me on the ropes and was just letting the combination go. I remember clearly being in a situation, taking a shot, some getting yep. through, some getting the gloves. Yep. I was thinking, it's a 12th round, you can't do this for too long. When he stops, I'm going to go. And then the referee jumped in. <laughs> and I was like, what? Um, I was hurt. I, don't get me wrong. I wasn't that fresh as a daisy thinking. It's like I was I was exhausted. Yeah. Um, I was just really exhausted and thinking, when he stops, I'm going to go again. Like, fight now, I will. And when the ref jumped in, I was just like, what are you doing? But then as I went, what are you doing? I watched enough boxing fights, you know, when it's over, it's over. Um, and then when I accepted that it was over, in my mind, I collapsed on the ropes. Yeah, because oh. I was just that exhausted. So I sat down, um, they went to put oxygen on me and whatnot. And I was like, no, I'm good, like, I'm cool. But I was just exhausted. I, like, I was so exhausted. I, I knew what was happening, but I couldn't be bothered to get up. I was just that exhausted. And then eventually, obviously, I got up and whatnot. Then we went out to the back and we were waiting to get the um, drug test. So I'm waiting to pee. But then I had a bit of a headache. So I asked my team, 
you know, I said, we should go get this checked just to be sure. And um, went to the hospital and they said I had a mild hematoma. I didn't know what it was at the time, but it's apparently it's a slight, it's a bleed to the surface of the brain. Um, so they said it was a Friday night. So they said, you got to stay in until Monday until the new neuro team comes in. And um, then that was a whole different story, another ordeal. But this has been going on for long enough, so I'll save that for another time. But um, off the back of that brain scan, the British Boxing Board suspended my license. I took another scan in December by an approved clinic by the British Boxing Board. It's the same clinic that I had the, my previous brain scan at before I renewed my license for 2020. And they compared my results from December 2020 to, I think it was June 2020 yeah. when I took the previous one. Yeah. And they said the results are identical. Okay. Right. So that means I'm, I'm good to go. But yeah. then the British Boxing Board are asking, oh, can you send us the results from Russia? So we send them the results that we've got from Russia. And then they said, they're like, well, this, we don't support this format. Can you get them to change the format? I'm thinking it's Russia. Like, who do you want me to go and speak Russian to to ask them technical things that change the format to one that suits you? But here's a result I had in June. Here's a result I had in December. They're identical, which means I'm fine. Um, and that's the last I've heard from the board. I'm just, I've just left it to my management to sort out. But um, it's a bit frustrating, but it's kind of not because I'm just getting, I'm just uh, keeping it stepping over here until this sort of tells up. So in relation to keeping in contact to find out when you can get your license or your suspension released. Yeah, that's what I said. So my, my management team are working on that. Right. And, but it's just back, the British Boxing Board have a system that typically requires three or four people to approve something. And each person takes about a week to follow up on what the person did the last time. Okay. Or sometimes I have certain processes where a person comes in once a month and everything's got to be ready for them. Yeah. And if you miss that window, then, or there's a complication, then you've got to come in the following. Then you got to wait for it until they come in the following. They've got processes like that. So okay. everything just drags on. So because of that, I'm just, I've just got in my mind, I'll probably be able to box maybe by the summer or after the summer. And I'm going to get as much experience as I can be out here. And I'm going to continue to focus on becoming the best version of myself as I can be, because then, when I do come back to the UK, I want to come back ready. An animal, just a complete different problem for everybody in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but also to be a talent that the UK is proud to claim now. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. And you still under Frank Warren at the moment or? Um, okay. We can edit. I don't that. actually know. <laughs> All no, right. my, don't uh, worry about you, it. No, no, no. I, I'm not contractually under Frank Warren, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, so so we have a good relationship. We haven't actually contractually been on the Frank Warren for a while. That's why oh, I don't right. really have to answer the question when people ask me. Yeah, we have a good relationship, but I'm not, we're not contracted to each other. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so um, it's just one of them ones. So which is part of why, obviously, I'm out here just doing my thing and getting out. Otherwise, then I'll be asking Frank to help me out. Yeah. Have you been keeping yeah. your eye on the UK fights while you've been out there the last Oh, yeah, 100%, yeah. I tune in. That's part of why I was saying I went to Mexico to get one back for the UK. Mm, I was going to go yeah, back I and get saw, it. I, saw the, I saw the post because yeah. it was it, um, it um, Lara? Yeah, Lara uh, Warrington. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, was it the second week? My mind's gone blank. Um, was it? Um, it was um, the Ingle Gym fight, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. The guy from the Ingle Gym. There's the two Joshes. Yeah, is it Jordan Gill? It's guy with hair, Jordan right? Gill came through. It was the Josh Kelly versus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's Josh that, Kelly, Avenesian. There were a few. There were a few of yeah. Mexicans that came. Yeah. Upset people, yeah. Yeah. A different type of uh, mindset, um, a different, different type of hunger. And I think the hungrier mm -hmm. you are. Well, this is the thing, though. This is, this is part of why I'm out at the moment, is because, yeah. I mean, you know, you say that different mindset, different hunger, and definitely does play a part. But what I find is a lot of times people in the UK aren't looking at how the hunger and the mindset are being applied in the ring. So if, for example, the fight where, um, I forgot the guy's name now, but anyway, Dom Ingalls fighter was fighting the Mexicans all. 
And from the first round, I was like, this guy's going to stop it. <laughs> like, to myself, I was saying. And then um, eventually, Dom asks him to turn south. Um, and I was on Twitter as well in between rounds, and people were like, why is he asking him to sell south? Um, I was just looking at the time. And when he got dropped, but what happened was he was getting, basically, when he was orthodox, he was getting set up with double jab, straight right hand in an awkward way. Mm -hmm. When he turned southpaw, he was able to nullify the, well, he was still getting caught with the right hand, but yeah. he's pulling back. Mm -hmm. When Dom Ingle asked him to switch southpaw, he said, you got to switch southpaw. When he throws his right hand, you got, you got to slip in angles rather than going straight back. Mm -hmm. And make sure you establish a jab. Because that was the other thing. When he was an orthodox, he wasn't jabbing much. Mm -hmm. And it was just, mm -hmm. and that's why he was getting walked down. So he turns out for his jabbing, he's avoiding the right hand by moving in angles, and all of a sudden he's surviving longer. Now he's still losing the fight, but I reckon he finished that fight because of the change that Dom Ingle asked him to make. Mm -hmm. If he had stayed orthodox, although he felt more comfortable yeah, in orthodox, he would have been stopped. He was been doing the right things, yeah, he would have got stopped. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just that but most people in Britain were just like, oh yeah, that guy was hungry and he came and they gave it to him. It's like, yeah, he gave it to him because he used an educated jab, he was using feints, he was mm -hmm. throwing the right hand at the right time, he was, he was failing the right hand, he was throwing it low and then bringing it up, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the other guy just wasn't even jabbing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why he was getting pinged. Mm. But so it's more than just the hunger and determination. Mm. Yeah, boxing IQ and styles as well. Yeah. Um, which Dominic yeah. Ingle clearly in the corner can see the chink, can see, mm -hmm. okay, we can manipulate that by doing this. You know, there's yeah. some really that we have got, you know, in the UK, some really good um, coaches that, mm -hmm. are, uh, you know, they've got that third eye and they can look in and give their. Um, fighter the right advice instead of saying to them go out there and get it well how mm -hmm. yeah got, got to start letting your hands go what do you mean combinations about... yeah what, do you understand you, you, you're going out there blind it's sort which, of like which hand first at yeah. what pace when, there you go what position there's so much more mm -hmm. because they're yeah. that you know as you do when you sit at home and you watch a fight you can anticipate when you're seeing it there two people I'm quite good at that. You can judge and see what they're going to do. You can see the little setups. When mm -hmm. you're in that fight, you can't see it. So they need to be coming back into the corner. The coach breaking it down quickly is doing this and this, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I want you to go out there and I want you to start, like you said, switch southpaw, slip the shot, mm -hmm. establish your jab. Yeah. Clean, clear yeah. instructions. Yeah. And he got slated big time. And I was thinking, does nobody else see what was happening? <laughs> but way before the lockdown, I was saying to myself, mm -hmm. he's going to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. yeah. So hopefully then we'll see you um, back fighting or going well with the um, BBFC to get your suspension lifted. We'll hopefully see you fighting mm -hmm. again in the UK soon. You and Lerone yeah. uh, Richards getting that on. You know, that's that a fight good. that I, yeah, I think I really look forward to seeing that fight. It's it's a fight that mm -hmm. brought both of you. I, I feel like that fight was so well, yeah, 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 because yeah. he's meant to be fighting for European title or something. I keep hearing, um, okay. our last fight was possible for the British, but I think there's enough interest generated from that, yeah, that it should he win the European and um, mount a defense against me. Mm -hmm. I think that would do very good on nearly any card. Yeah. In the UK. Yeah. So um it, it could potentially headline a show depending mm -hmm. on what show it is. Yeah. Um, but also it could easily be achieved support, I reckon. It's a yeah. good fight for both of us. Very good yeah. fight. Definitely. Yeah. So when you come back, are you gonna bring any of the American coaches with you? Or are you going back to your your, your normal stable? Yeah. Um I'm I'm more than likely gonna merge the two as best as I can. Yeah. Um, also partially because the coach over here, he's got a lot of fires, as I mentioned, and especially if there are any clashes or anything, you know, he might not be able to travel. Okay. Um, but if he's able to, then I'll just merge the two. But similarly, if I'm fighting here, I'm a coach in the UK, again, I was able yeah. to come over, then I'll get him to come over. I'm, I'm more interested in merging the two. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah. Well, is yeah. there anything else that you want to say before we go? Because I'm mindful that we've been going for over an hour. Is it over an hour? Yeah. I've got, yeah, I've definitely got to go. Um, now, guys, thank you for watching this far. If you have been, 
Um, follow me on all my social medias, Top Boxer Sadiq, Twitter, Instagram. Um, what else? I'm not sure. YouTube as well. And um, yeah, have a nice day and you'll be blessed for watching this far. Thank you very much uh, once again for coming on October Red Interviews. No doubt we'll speak to you soon. <laughs>